Now it has. How are you guys doing? My favorite class, the CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure. How you, you guys doing good? You can hear me okay? I'm doing good. No way. <laughs> Oh my God, really? <laughs> Raymond, what browser are you guys using? Log off and log back in using Chrome. And the voice should be good, right? You, you guys should be able to hear me okay, clearly. All right, this is a combo class that I do, uh, which has elements of CCI's uh, enterprise infrastructure and CCI service provider in the same. The benefit it offers is that it gives you a little bit more than either one would do. There is a, a split that does take place when you go detailed into the enterprise infrastructure topics versus the SP topics but there's a big chunk that is similar, but I go in a little bit more deeper in some of the subjects, so that helps both sides. My objective over here is not just to make sure that you pass the exam, I do that, but besides that, my objective is to make sure you actually excel in your workplace. So you actually understand the technologies, you actually know why you're putting a command in based on the the requirement rather than just putting in uh, commands just because you've seen it on a config. So any command that you put in, I will make sure you understand the, the consequences and the, uh, the implications of putting a command in or not putting a command in. So uh, just to give you an idea, there's a lot of different topics that are going to be common between the EI class and the SP class. We'll do that together. And then at one point, we'll split up and there'll be EI topics, specifically topics like SD access, SD WAN. Uh, these are the two main topics that you have over here. And you have more topics in terms of SP, like MPLS, detailed MPLS VPNs, like the inter-AS MPLS VPNs, uh, your uh, CSC, your uh, traffic engineering. These are specific topics for SP, segment routing. Whereas over here, you are going more detailed into these SDN type of topics. But up until that, I cover everything which is pretty much the same for both. And the benefit that I that you guys have by doing it, although it becomes a longer class for me, the advantage that you guys have by doing it like this is you get more topics under your belt. For example, in EI, I do cover, I only need to cover EHRP or and OSPF as my routing protocols, but because of SP, I also cover ISIS. So as part of the class, you not only learn about EIGRP and OSPF, you also learn about uh, ISIS. You guys understand uh, the way it's going to happen? So it's a, uh, there are going to be more topics in the class than in a normal class. So that's something that I will do. And at the same time, there, uh, there's a topic in EI that is DMVPN, which is not a required topic in SP. I cover that. So by going into the class, you actually get both the topics covered for you guys or topics from both sides that are covered 
which I feel are important for you to learn in a real life scenario. But there are certain topics that are completely off and those are the ones that will split up. I'll make sure, yeah, I'll talk about all those type of things. Let me finish the in, initial lecture. Uh, just write down the questions for what you have for yourself. Don't post them over here because that it does distract me. Whatever questions you have, I'll make sure I answer them before the end of the class. So that's what's going to happen over here initially. And once that's done, then we go into detailed topics. The, the reason I like this particular track the most is the technologies that are covered. These are your core technologies that you need to understand to be a good engineer for anything that deals with networking. Your routing protocols need to be solid and you will learn EIGRP, you will learn OSPF, you, you will learn ISIS. You might say, well, I'm not gonna run ISIS. You never know when that can be helpful in your technology. Just to give you an idea, just the knowledge of ISIS will help you because in a certain technologies that you have out there that Cisco puts out, like as the axis, their their underlay protocol that they use by default is ISIS. If you're running a technology like uh, ACI, their underlay technology is ISIS. So you, as an enterprise guy, you might say, "Well, I I really don't care about it," but even in the technologies that are enterprise technologies, ISIS now is becoming a, a, a de facto protocol that Cisco uses for underlay technology. So it's always good to know that. And to be honest, a lot of a lot has been said about ISIS being a difficult protocol. In my opinion, it's a great protocol. It's a very easy protocol. It's a very a versatile protocol. So it's great to know that protocol. All right. So I will go over all the different topics that will be covered. As part of the class, I will also be going over a, uh, at, towards the end of the class, I will go over what is known as a super lab, which is like a full mock lab for the CCI that will prepare you for the, the, uh, the CCI lab as well. So that's also a big, uh, what do you call it, motivation for the class, another good thing to have under your belt for the class. And a lot of people will be doing that for the CCI Enterprise. Just to give you an idea, and if you guys want, I can give you numbers for that. I, uh, I've had three people, uh, three students that have passed the, the CCI last, maybe uh, in the last, in November, December, uh, and uh, January. I have three students that have passed based on these classes. So, Everything that is required for that exam, you'll actually understand the technologies, okay? And as part of the class, you'll also get the super lab. Good? Everybody understand that? Everybody okay with this? So the purpose of the class is not just to make sure you pass the exam. The purpose of the class is also to make sure you're ready for the real world. You can actually implement these technologies in real world. The other thing, that is also great about the class is uh, the SDA labs from the perspective of SDA. We are doing the labs on real equipment, actual equipment, because that's something that you cannot generally virtualize. So if you have a full SDA rack, and I'll give you a tour of what we have over there on the SDA rack. So as part of the class, you also get hours on the SDA rack. So you will know SDA, you will actually implement SDA for the as part of the class. I will demonstrate the class to you guys. I'll show you how it's done and then you guys get a chance to do them as well. All right, so those are some of the things that they'll be doing in as part of the class. So let's go ahead and take a look at the topics. And the topics, as I said, I'm gonna go over the enterprise infrastructure topics first and then we'll go in into your, uh, the CCI SP topics as well. Just to uh, get an idea, how many SP Guys, how many people over here are interested in, interested in the SP part of the class? Just so that I have an idea of the breakdown. Any SP guys over here that are doing the class for the SP per, uh, from the SP perspective? No? You can write on the chat, I'm looking at it. So most of you guys are looking for the EI part of it, right? 
All right, how many people are looking for the EI part of it? All right, majority of, the, of you guys are EI, perfect, great. And as I said, that's great. The last, uh, last couple of months, we've had about three people, three to four people that have passed the EI lab after taking the, the course. Everything that uh, I do over here is sufficient. You don't need anything else to pass the exam as long as you do the labs over here. Every topic is covered. Now, I'm not going to, I don't do any NDA stuff. I don't do the lab per se, but anything that you need or will be asked on the lab will be covered. Not only that, there are changes, minor changes that are going to happen in the new version of uh, EI. Any changes that they add, uh, they make on the blueprint in the future, they are planning on introducing some minor changes that will also, you will also be covered. You will be protected in terms of any changes that happen on the new blueprint. We'll, we'll actually include that in the lab. If anything comes in, because this, this lab is going to be, uh, this class is a long class because there's a lot of content. And if there's any changes in the middle that, they are, that are announced, which I was not covering, I will cover them as well. So you are protected from that perspective. So don't worry about oh, new changes being uh, coming up. And they are planning on making some minor changes. So you are covered with that. So let's start with the technologies that the next EI lab, uh, super EI lab, it's already there, Jody. So it's a previous lab that I did. So you can always watch the videos. So I'm not planning on doing a new one yet because I do it at the end of the class. But the older one is posted on the, on the KBITS for uh, the, the set of classes. So if you sign for this class, I believe that comes as part of the class. So the older class that I've done, you will have access to that. All right, so what are the different topics? The first topic that we'll cover are basic layer two technologies. Layer two technologies is a very small portion of the exam. When I took my exam about 20 years ago, uh, I would say 30% of my lab was based on switching. And at that time, you had physical switches. You had to physically uh, configure all the trunk ports, the port channels. And if you did not do your layer two stuff properly, you would not be able to pass the exam because your routing depended on your layer two being set up properly. In the current exam, which is 90, uh, I say 90%, 80% virtualized, which is on a virtualized platform, 90, 80% of the lab is virtualized. So you don't have any switching over there. There is a portion of switching that is still there. Basic stuff on a very small part of the technology that you need to set up. Uh, VLANs, trunking, port channels, STP. We will cover all of that. Not a big portion of the, of the exam, but it's there. You need to know how to do that. So this is our first topic. It's probably going to take us a single session to do that more than enough to finish that off. So we're gonna start with this as our first session. Once that's done, the next topic is the IGP topic. And this is where I'm gonna cover OSPF. Uh, the super lab, I have already covered it, Jody. Uh, hang in there, let me go over the topics. I'll talk about the super lab at the end. And I'm sure I'll answer that question for you as well. So. Uh, the protocols in terms of the IGP, I'm going to start with OSPF. I'm going to cover EIGRP. Once these two protocols are done, actually, I'm going to do EIGRP first, get that out of the way. Once EIGRP is done, I'm going to do OSPF next. And then right after OSPF, I'm also going to cover as our third IGP, ISIS. Now, remember, ISIS is not going to be on the EI exam. But this topic, in my opinion, is a very, very important topic. You will see that this protocol is going to be used in more and more of Cisco's uh, technologies, not necessarily based on uh, what you need to configure, but just from your understanding, you will need ISIS. 
How many people over here have worked with data center technologies? You have, right, Antonio? Do you remember Fabric Path? Fabric Path, it died, yeah, but uh, the underlay protocol with Fabric Path to exchange MAC addresses was ISIS. Then there was another technology, OTV, to exchange the MAC addresses across two different data centers, OTV again, it was using ISIS as the protocol. All right? Now, the, uh, the other one, ACI, the underlay technology is ISIS. SD access, the underlay routing protocol is ISIS. So ISIS is being used as the underlay technology for Cisco for years now. And it is gonna continue happening like that. It's very important protocol. It's a very important protocol that you need to have an understanding of, all right? So although it's not on your blueprint, I cover it. So that when you come out of the class, you're just not understanding it from the perspective of what's on the blueprint, but you understand it from, uh, you understand your IGPs at a different level. All right? So right after OSPF, uh, after EIGRP, OSPF, the third protocol we are also gonna cover is ISIS. So after switching your IGPs, which is EIGRP, OSPF, and ISIS, once that's done, we'll go into the EGP part of it. And the EGP part of it is BGP. We're going to do extensive drill down on BGP, starting with eBGP, IBGP, advanced features, things like filtering, summarization, which is called aggregation in BGP, confederations, attributes, load uh, conditional advertising uh, advertisement load balancing dynamic neighbors with bgp where you can set up a bgp neighbor relationship without actually putting a neighbor command all right one sec guys One sec, guys, a student is not connecting in problem. All right, so we're going to go through BGP. There's about 27 labs just on BGP that we actually cover. All right, and the way I'm, I'm, I always cover the classes is I explain explain the technology, the theory behind the technology as it pertains to the uh, implementation of the protocol. I actually explain and show you the labs. I actually demonstrate each and every lab. All right? As part of the course, you get access to my workbook. There are over 200 different labs for different technologies in that workbook. Just to give you a sample of the workbook, Just to show you that, the EI workbook. These are the different labs. We'll start with 15 labs on layer two technologies. EIGRP, there's about 23 labs. OSPF, about 14 labs. BGP, about 27 labs. IPv6, about seven labs on that. Uh, VPNs, we'll do point-to-point -point VPNs, DMVPN, we'll also do a flex VPN, basic flex VPN configuration. Uh, MPLS unicast routing, just to give you an example of a lab. Over here, this also has your SD-WAN and SD-Access labs. These are your SD-WAN labs. There's about, how many? About 30, 40 uh, SD-WAN labs, about 33 SDA labs. And all these labs I demonstrate to you guys. So for example, this is a, an example of uh, a, uh, a route filtering lab with the EIGRP. It'll have a diagram. It'll have 
the tasks, configure the loopbacks based on that. And this is the solution for that. The solution is right there. Task two, configure R2 and R4 such that they receive prefixes with a prefix length of eight to uh, 24 from R5. This is the solution for that. Right, so everything, every lab that is there, I will demonstrate to you guys. The great thing about this is 80% of these labs can be done on your laptop using EVNG. If you don't have a powerful enough, uh, enough laptop, a laptop uh, you can access KCloud, which I have set up with these labs pre-configured with the initial config. And for a very low cost, I think it's about $5 an hour, you get access to a 128 gig box with a preloaded EVNG with all the images loaded, including SD-WAN. You can do all of that. I'll show you how that works as well towards the end of the class. So this is the workbook. So this is the methodology that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna talk about the theory. I'm gonna show you the labs. I'm gonna talk about why am I doing everything. So you'll understand each and every topic and why am I doing a particular command for accomplishing a certain task. So that's the objective over here. So once BGP is done, the next topic is IPv6. Again, I showed you there's a bunch of different labs for IPv6. We'll do addressing. We'll do EIGRPv6, OSPFv3, tunneling. I'm also going to include NAT64 over here. So NAT64 is also covered as part of it because on, in the SP part of things, you have NAT64. All right, good. Once this is done, we go to the VPNs. As I showed you the labs, we'll do GRE, GRE over IPsec, we'll do MGRE, we'll do DMVPN, we'll also do FlexVPN. Now, FlexVPN, I don't expect them to ask you the FlexVPN part on the lab portion of the exam where you do the actual configuration. But there are two sections on this new format of CCIE. In this new format of CCIE, they have a design portion and they have the, the config troubleshooting portion. This is roughly two and a half hours. This is five and a half hours. In the design portion, it is like your written exam where the questions are about uh, like the A, B, C, D choices, but the question format and the mindset is completely different. The purpose of the CCIE design portion is to make sure you understand the technologies from the perspective of how would you implement them? Where would you implement a certain technology? So for example, uh, they'll give you a background of a small company, company background, and along with the background, they'll give you some requirements that the company has. There'll be some email exchanges between maybe two different uh, engineers in the company explaining a particular problem or a requirement that they have. And based on that, what you would need to do over here is you would need to configure or not configure, sorry, you would need to specify what technology would fulfill the company requirement. Would you want to run OSPF as a technology? Would you want to run EHRP as a technology? Would BGP be a protocol that you can use over here? What is the best suited technology for that particular requirement? I'm giving you it from a perspective of uh, IGPs. They can ask you the same thing from the perspective of VPNs. Based on a particular company background requirement and an email exchange between engineers, what VPN would you implement over there? So it's more like a low-level design document. They want you to understand what type of technology will fulfill the requirement over here. And that takes about two and a half hours. Those type of things are also going to be covered as part of the exam. It's not like a separate section, but when I'm talking about VPNs, I'm going to actually explain to you guys the, the problem areas that a, a particular VPN will address. So when a question comes in, in terms of the design part, uh, what type of VPN would be better suited for a particular requirement? You would be able to answer that question. All right. You all good with this? You guys understand that? So if you had a question about what happens with the design part of it, that's how I'm covering design. 
So as part of my lectures, when I talk about what, as part of the sessions, I will cover the design part as the theoretical part of it, the requirements, the way a technology works, where would you use the technology? All those things will be covered as part of my sessions. Good. So that's done. So VPNs is done. Once the VPNs are done, we go into MPLS. And up until now, both the classes, whether you're doing the SP class or you're doing the EI class, both will run simultaneously. MPLS label, sw uh, label switching. In this part, for the EI part, you do need to know this. But you know, need to know it from a single service provider perspective, which is called an intra AS MPLS VPN. You'll be able to set up a complete intra AS MPLS VPN from scratch. We'll cover that over here. All right. So once that's done, this is the point that it's the same type of topics pretty much between EI and SP. This is where generally the split is going to happen. I'm going to split the class where I'll go more into SP, uh, SP topics versus EI topics. All right. But up until now, I will cover both the classes together. At this point, we'll split up. And this is where in terms of the EI class, because majority of you guys are here for the EI class, in my opinion, the most important part of the class starts. On the exam, 25% of your points come from the next set of topics. 25% of the exam is broken down into SD axis and SD WAN. If you don't cover these two topics and you don't understand these two topics properly, you have no chance of passing this exam. In my opinion, these are the most important topics in this exam, not just from the perspective of passing the exam, but in today's day and age, you can actually get a job just based on good, solid understanding of these two technologies. SD Access and SD WAN. SD WAN is already popular, but as you progress as the access is also becoming a very, very lucrative thing to have on your resume. A lot of companies, because there's a lack of resources for this particular technology. And one of the main reasons is uh, it's very hard to practice on this because uh, equipment is not available. R rack rentals are not available for that. This is going to be a, a very lucrative thing, very important thing to have on your resume. All right, so SD access is something that I would really get into. And the great thing about this class is you actually have the ability not only to uh, learn about the topics, actually practice on it. You'll actually be able to do the SDA labs. You'll actually be able to do SD-WAN labs full coverage of the SDA and SD-WAN classes is going to be done over here. I'll cover these classes just like I would do a full-on SD-WAN class. I'll cover this class as I would do a full SDA class. So everything that I do from the, the ground up, I will do over here. So for example, on the exam, generally speaking, they don't care about bringing the controllers up. They will have the controllers bought up on the exam. I will show you how to bring the controllers up from scratch. I'll show you how to bring up the WAN edges from scratch, all the devices. So if you have a blank network, how do you bring the blank network up for SD-WAN? All right, so deep coverage over here. There's about 40 labs that will just do on SD-WAN. And as I said, my objective is to make sure you not only are passing the exam, but also are ready for the real life. You're ready for that interview. You're ready for that next job. Especially in today's market, which is very competitive right now with a lot of people getting laid off. These things are very important things to have on your resume. These are the technologies of the present and the future. All right. So SD-WAN first and followed by SD-Access. Again, another close to 40 labs over here as well. So just over here, 
you expect to see roughly around 70 labs. If not 70, very close to 70. All right, and as I said, if you're looking for the exam, 25% of the exam is based on these two topics. Once this is done, we get into the light part of the exam. At this point, you would have covered majority of the exam. The next set of things, although it is not a security exam, they do ask you about basic security stuff. We'll take a look at zone-based firewall, basic AAA services. Uh, you don't have ICE, but just the how to set up uh, authentication on the routers based on local authentication versus pointing to a AAA server like ICE hypothetically, a port security on the switch, DHCP security on the switch, VLAN ACLs on the switch. We'll take a look at all of that. Once security is done, we'll look at some other routing topics that are important. IP services, HSRP, VRRP, IPSLA, NTP, DHCP, NAP. We'll take a look at quality of service. We'll take a look at multicast routing. When I took my exam, this used to be a big portion. This used to be about 10% of the lab. If not more, about 15, actually more than that, about 15% of the lab in my day when I took the exam was these three topics. Now it's barely 5%, but I will cover that. You will understand how quality of service works. You'll understand the IP services, and you'll also understand multicast routing. We'll be taking a look at that as well over here. Uh, running PIM dense mode, sparse mode, MSDP, all of that. And then we'll take a look at Python. How do you automate the stuff? How do you automate uh, configuring your device based on Python? All right. For example, let's say uh, you want to back up all your routers in one shot, write a script to go ahead and go log into all your routers and back them up, create a backup file. How do you do it? How do you automate that? We'll take a look at detail. Look, if you've never done programming before, I'll show you how programming is done and you will understand how to do programming. And the Python that we cover over here is not for creating a website. The Python that we're doing over here is specifically for what? Network automation. So it's not going to show you stuff that you don't really care about. It is specifically for network automation. We'll also, although I haven't written over here, I'll also cover EEM for the automation part of it. All right, I'll get to that, uh, Suleiman. Just give me one minute. I'm all, almost done with that. All right, so these are the topics that are covered as part of the EI part of the class. Now, the way the class is covered, uh, the class generally runs on Sundays. The timings are 8 p.m. Dubai time. There's no time change. So if you run, uh, you're living in a country that does do the daylight savings time, it will always be 8 p.m. Dubai time. So you might need to adjust to the Dubai time at the time the class changes which will happen as part of your class because uh, sometime in April, the times or, or March, sometime uh, some countries change it in March, the time will change, but it'll always be 8 p.m. Dubai time on Sundays. The class generally runs for about four hours. And again, Jody, it might change because of the daylight savings time. It might be 10 a.m. right now. It might be changing in March or April. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't change. The buy time doesn't change. So eight, uh, it's a four hour class. Now, once the class is done, I upload the, I do the rendering of the, uh, the, uh, the class and the class is made available to you by Wednesday latest, you get the recording of the class. So all the classes are recorded, you get access to that. Not only that, when you sign up for the class, you also get access to the previous classes that I have done. Unfortunately, I also fast him and the classes, maybe we take a 15, 20 minute break at the time of the fasting. But uh, coming back, I'll show you the site. So the same time, same place that you logged in. So let me log into the site.
log in. Waiting for the code. So once you log in, it'll send a code and OTP to your email account. So every time it's sent, you log in over here. So when you go to videos, for example, let's say you signed up for the EI class. When you go to the EI class, the current class will be over here. And as new classes get added, added up, it'll be showing over here. Now the Superlab Enterprise Infrastructure class. So once this is done, right now is a joining of the live class. You click on it, you logged into the class. Once this is done, uh, in, on Wednesday, this will change to a video of the class. So you, you can watch the video over here. Any class that I do, if you've attended my classes, I create the notes for the class. I have diagrams for the class. I have the EVNG technology for the class. All of those notes are available to you over here. All right. So if you want to get ahead, you have as part of the class, you get access to the previous classes as well. So this is the class that I finished last year. This is the one before that. This is the one before that. So all these lectures are always available to you. Uh, this is a annual subscription. All right. This is an annual subscription. So you get it for one year. And not only that, you have an annual subscription. So the next time I do this class in about six months, and if you want to reattend the live classes, you get access to the live classes as well. Now for the Super Lab, when you sign up, Super Lab is part of this, but you also get the Super Lab by itself. So if you just signed up for the EI Super Lab, so this is, these are the, the two Super Labs that I've done. The last one I did was in December. So the whole class, which is an eight hour lab and the implementation is over here. So Jody, that's what I was trying to explain to you. So your classes are recorded. All the classes are available to you. All the notes are available to you. The EVNG topologies, if you're working with EVNG, they're also available to you. All the EVNG topologies are over here. This is not the one, EI, where's EI? So if you look at there, over here, you have a whole bunch of EVNG uh, topologies. So for the different labs. So if you wanna do that on your own, you have access to that. Now, let's say you don't wanna use your own rack, you, uh, especially for things like SD-WAN where you require a little bit more of a beefier, uh, set up, what you can do is over here, you log in, you buy hours, which is uh, $20, uh, 20 hours for $100, which is, as I said, $5 an hour. You start the, the rack, you, uh, it's a dedicated server for you guys. So whatever configs that you do on it, it's saved for you. It'll take about a minute and it'll fire up the server for you. Let it come up, I'll show you what it looks like. So Jody, does that answer your question in, per, in terms of if you logged in, you will have access, or if you signed up for the class, you'll have access to the EI Super Lab as well. It's processing, once it's done processing, once I start the rack, it will go and say it's ready, and then I can log in and use it. Check with support in terms of how many hours you get as part of the class. When you sign up for the class, you do get an X number of hours. So I can take this IP address. It's a public address, log in. It gets access to your own EVNG image. So once I log in over here, all the labs that you have are over here. So for example, EI, you wanna launch any of the EI labs, the topologies are pre-created. You wanna run launch, you want to do SD-WAN. I have a special place for SD-WAN. And what I've done with that is because SD-WAN is a large lab, there's certain portions that correspond to my lab. What I've done is I've created different, uh, how should I, bookmarks for my lab. So for example, let's say you the last time around, you did all your controllers. Controllers are set up in labs one through eight. So this is the controller setup. So let's say the last time around you spent some time and you did all the controller setup. Now you don't want to do the controller setup again. What you want to do is you want to move forward and do the WAN setup or WAN edge setup. So what you can do is rather than using this lab, you can start with this, which is 
already built up with one through 12 done and you can start with lab 13. There's another breakpoint that I have created where you have the controllers and the WAN edges and the templates done and you wanna just do the policies. You can start with lab number 27. So you have these things that I've done already for you on KCloud. So you can always utilize that if you wanna use that. And this is a very powerful box. So you wanna have any problem with the resources. So all the different SD-WAN topologies are there. All your EI classes are there. So if you wanna do any of the labs, you have access to that. So for example, this is your BGP topology over here. This is the topology that I use in my uh, workbook. I use it in my class. So all these things are preset for you. Now, just to show you how easy it is, once these are set up, all you gotta do is click on more actions, start notes. This is EVNG, a full topology, and your routers will be started. And now when, I, let's say the routers are started, I can just double click on a router. Let's go to router one, open it up. And guess what? The router comes up and all the configs, all the IP addresses are pre-configured for you. The pre-config is done for you. Understood? So this is part of your K Cloud. You do get X number of hours as part of the class. But again, the best place to answer the questions about the hours and stuff would be support at kbis.live. The only thing that you should do is once you're done with the labs, everything is done over here, you closed everything, do make sure you go back to your account because your server is still running. Make sure you stop your server at the end. So whatever hours you basically bought, they will, uh, they will not exhaust, especially if it's coming with a class. You don't want to exhaust three hours by keeping your server up. So make sure you stop the server before you're done, after you're done with the, the session and you just move forward. All right, so this is where you would, you would do the labs. Now, I wanna open it up for the questions that you guys had. Any questions that you had that I haven't answered, any topics that you wanna talk about, this is the time that you can ask, ask those questions. Yes, Chris, what about the labs? No, once you get the hours allocated to you, you just log into your account and you can start the lab like I did over here. I will cover them right after this. Any questions on the EI part? Absolutely. And I demonstrated, I showed you the video, the, the workbook as well. This is a sample of one of the labs that I'm doing over here. I showed you EIGRP, let me show you. SD-WAN. So this is the SD-WAN topology that I'm running, configuring, let's say I'm doing feature templates for VPN and VPN interfaces. This is the topology and this is the task. Configure a VPN template to be used by all branch managers. And this is the way I'm showing you the solution. Plus you'll always have access to my videos so you can see me do these type of things in the videos as well. But this is the workbook. And in this workbook, these are the labs that you have. All these labs are here. There's over 200 labs. This is about a thousand, uh, like a six, 700 page workbook. So yes, you do have labs, uh, a lab workbook to follow. Uh, would be uh, signing up for this class with valid access to the material for 12 months, correct? That is correct. So yes, you will have access to it for 12 months. I don't have viral images. I, uh, you can use the EVNG on your own server or you can use KCloud. So EVNG topologies, absolutely. As I showed you, as part of my classes, the older classes, they're already there. As I do the new class, 
I'll also upload it. So for example, just to show you, yeah, you will get the those over here. So if you look at my previous class, so these are the EVNG UNL files, the zip files, these are the, the files. Uh, Suleiman, just uh, 12 months is a lot of time, but uh, send a message to support at Cables Alive. They take care of that. I don't know what deals they have going on most of the time. I stay away from the business end of things to keep my sanity. So best place to check is support at Cables Alive. It's great content, man. I'm telling Jody, I'm not saying it just because it's me. It is a lot of content how we can use your EVNG labs in your, can you demonstrate how we can use your EVNG labs in our own NG installation, never used it before. Uh, to set up EVNG, the best place to do that, Kasim, is to check on EVNG. By the way, just make sure you put the message to everyone because they're not seeing the message otherwise. Right now, it's just coming to me. Question Kasim asks is, can you demonstrate how we can use your EVNG labs in our own EVNG? installation. So to set up EVNG, go to EVNG.net. They have a cookbook that basically shows you exactly how to set it up. All right. Once you set it up, I, I will give you, uh, what do you call it? I'll give you the UNL file that you can upload. So for example, this is my EVNG. This is my local EVNG. It's not the KCloud one. So let's say I give you a file. I'll show you, I'll upload a file over here. So as part of the class, you'll get a file. So once you have the file, one of those such files is here in my EI folder from my previous class. So th these are EVNG files. So let's say I wanna load up this particular file, EIGRP lab one. So I will give you the zip file, right? Keep the zip file, go into EVNG. I'll just load it up over here. There's an option for import, click on it. Browse to the folder. So my folder over here that I kept the file in is over here. This is the one that I showed you. EIGRP1, click open. It says upload. As soon as you upload it, you'll see the file over here. Click on it. And guess what? That whole topology is set up. I do not provide the images, but uh, you need to have your own images for EVNG. I do provide the UNL file. So now I've just loaded up my device. And if I go to any of the devices, let's say this device over here, it has the pre-config already loaded on. As long as you have the image. In this class, based already, uh, no, I will give you that. Mike, put the question to everyone. Is this class based on already having passed CC and PN core or it will give me the knowledge? It will give you a lot of knowledge to pass the N core. The thing that I cannot guarantee you on that is sometimes they ask you questions that are very theoretical. Uh, I don't really care about the theoretical part from the perspective of how many uh, CPUs are set up on a vManage to set it up and all that type of stuff. I don't care about that. But from an implementation perspective, from an understanding of the protocol perspective, everything will be covered. So it actually help you for you anymore. Mike, that's for you. His question was, uh, do you need to have CCNP and core already fast? Any other questions, guys? Uh, ideal, uh, again, guys, if you don't mind when you put the question, put it to everyone rather than just to me, because I want everyone to know what the question is. Question ideal asked was, do you have another session for CCI Enterprise running this class? Absolutely. As soon as this class finishes, which takes about roughly five to six months, I'll start another one. So I do generally two classes a year. And by signing up for this class, you also have access to that one. You have access to two classes. Thank you, Chris.
All right, any other question in terms of the delivery, access to resources, content, anything? Everybody good with this? Now, somebody was asking about the, the EI part of it. So not EI, the SP part of it. So most of the stuff I've covered, the extra bit where I go into SD-WAN and the other topics, from the service provider perspective, SP outline, where is it, where is it? No, they're all on, uh, you know, on uh, Google Cloud or G Cloud. So it's, it's absolutely seamless. So there's no delay. These are all cloud servers. So it's not something that I'm housing locally. So you should not have any problems with that. So OSPF, as I said, ISIS will be covered common. Uh, redistribution. IPv6 overview, common, BGP, the same 27 labs, we'll do BFD. Up until now, it's the same that we covered in the EI part. Now, the extras that we'll do in SP is detailed look at inter-AS MPLS designs. We'll take a look at all the different options that you have, A, B, C, non-VPN transit provider. We'll take a look at CSC models. We'll take a look at large-scale MPLS, which is unified MPLS, We'll take a look at segment routing. This is beyond the EI part of the class, all right? So once this is done, there's some common topics that come up again, multicast routing, we'll do that. Uh, MPLS traffic engineering, that is specific to the uh, service product class. We'll take a look at traffic engineering. We'll take a look at quality of service, specifically quality of service that deals with uniform and pipe modes. Then we'll take a look at layer two VPNs as well. That includes VPLS, eVPN, Atom, all the different type of layer two VPNs. We'll cover them over here as well. And that's pretty much it. So those are the extra topics that will be covered at the time we're covering SD access, SD RAM. Uh, roughly how much overlap between EI and service provider? I would say 70% is overlap. The way I cover it, because Although you don't need, need ISIS for EI, I cover that. You don't need DMEPN for SP, I cover it. So you'll get that extra anyways. But 70% is what I would consider to be common. No, that has nothing to do with, uh, these are two different things. The good thing, if you have a KB Learn uh, subscription already, you get a discount on this class. So if you're already a current subscriber of KB Learn, there's a discount that you get in this for this class, signing up for the class. There's a subscriber price and a non-subscriber price. And they actually are there. It's not just a gimmick. Can you explain Encore and CCI since I passed it recently? In core, the enterprise core exam is what used to be the old written exam. So what they did, and I really actually like what they've done. In the past, there used to be a written exam, which was called the CCIE written exam. They got rid of it. They replaced it by using this exam called the in core exam, enterprise core exam, all right? What this does for you is when you take this exam, this also covers a very important part of your CCNP enterprise. To get a CCNP enterprise certification, you need to take the Encore exam plus an elective. An elective could be SD Access, SD WAN. Uh, there is also an, uh, advanced routing. I don't remember exactly the full form of it. Any one of those classes, one exam, make you a CCNP enterprise. But this taking of the uh, NCORE exam, which is a written exam, just like any other Cisco exam, it also qualifies you, becomes the prereq. This is the written exam now.
for taking the lab, CCI lab. Mahesh, does that make sense? This course is specifically designed for the CCI lab, but it covers a lot of your NCORE. So if you haven't done NCORE yet, do the NCORE after the class. CCI lab, as I told you, is broken down into two parts. The first part is the design part, which is about two and a half hours. In this, it's more of a design, a low level design exam, where they expect you to know same topics, same exact topics uh, that you have on the, the CCIE blueprint from those topics, a low level design, more from the perspective of the uh, implementation of what technology would you implement where? And then the lab portion is the configuration portion, which is five and a half hours. It will help you uh, prepare for the NCORE exam. It might not have full coverage. The reason I say it doesn't have full coverage, there's certain theoretical things that they'll ask you, they might ask you from the perspective of uh, hardcore theory that I don't cover. I cover from the implementation perspective of it, but it will make sure your all your routing protocols are completely covered. Absolutely, I covered that as part of my uh, explanation in the last one hour. As part of my lectures, my sessions will cover everything that you need to know from the design perspective. All right. And was there, there was another question that I had to answer. Yeah. In terms of a, a, like a full lab, what does it look like? Uh, this is the super lab that I was talking about. This is an example. Uh, this is what I cover as part of this. You will get this as part of the class as well. So the super lab is made up, which is basically designed to help you pass the exam. This is the full topology of the super lab where you have your SD-WAN, you have SD-AXIS, the SD-AXIS connects up to SD-WAN. You have your MPLS circuit over here where you need to set that up. You have SP over here. I do a lot of BGP on this site over here. This is your BGP site. All your BGP stuff is done over here. These are, these are different sites for SD-WAN, which are gonna use uh, the MPLS circuit as one of the transports and the other transport is the internet. So you set the entire thing up yourself. This is where I cover OSPF and EIGRP in detail. This is where I cover BGP in detail. This is your MPLS VPN. There is a DM VPN that is also going between these sites covered over here. And then this is the headquarters site that which is focused on the two SDN technologies, SD access and the controllers for SD-WAN. Do you get into migrations as into SD-WAN, SD-Access as part of a discussion, yes. But in terms of the implementation, it'll be a fresh install. When I do the theoretical part of it, yes, I do cover the migration aspect of things as well. How do you uh, basically run it in a uh, brownfield environment? We do cover that as part of the session, the explanation of it. You need to, there are certain technologies that are backward compatible, especially in SD access, becomes very important. And over here, there is a merge of the two. So if you take a look at this, I have five sites, five branches, BR1, BR2, BR3, four and five. What I do is for the first three sites, connecting to the headquarter, I'm using SD-WAN. So these sites are connecting into the headquarter using SD-WAN. And some of the sites which are not running V edges or do not have SD-WAN, I'm running it using DMVPN. So these sites connect up using DMVPN I, and I merge them and my end result will be my SD-WAN branches will be able to talk to my non-SD-WAN DMVPN branch offices by the end of the lab. This is the super lab. So it's very realistic of what a general company would have. This is my super lab. And this is done at the end of the class. And these are the questions. I've broken it down into sections, very similar to what you will have on the exam. 
So these are the tasks that you need to co cover. This is how the exam will be laid out for you, covering BGP, IBGP, and going through SD-WAN, all the different things, all the whole topology that I showed you, the questions for that is over here. So all these questions are here. It's about 100 pages of questions. This class is loaded, man. There is, to me, as I said, this is my favorite class because it has so much content. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you, Jody, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Once the course is done and you actually have been doing labs all along, Two months after that, the I had a class that I did uh, for which I finished. It was like a boot camp type of stuff, which I did the same thing. Uh, I finished it in October, and uh, the four people that I talk about that just passed the exam in the months of uh, December, November, December, and January, they took about two months after the the lab to pass it. So my recommendation, as long as you've been keeping up. With the course, let's say the course finishes sometime in May, take a couple of months where you actually need to do all the lab yourself. You don't need to look at any documentation. So for example, in the lab workbook, there's a task and there's a solution for it. So there's a task and there's a solution for it. This is good to learn it. So this is what you would do for the first, let's say four or five months when, once you're learning the technology. When you're preparing for the exam, you need to be able to take a look at the task and be able to do it without looking at the answers. When you can do that and you need to dedicate time for that, I would say a couple of months working maybe four hours every other day, you should have enough time to take it. Provided you've been doing the labs all along, you've done the workbook at least once. It is a great certification to have. Uh, just the preparation for the CCI lab exam will make you a better engineer. I will guarantee you that. If you prepare for the CCI properly, just the preparation will make you a better engineer, whether you pass the exam or not. It's great to pass the exam, but you will be a better engineer. That I can guarantee you. You will understand what LSAs are, uh, for example, with OSPA, why is an LSA one there? Why is an LSA two there? What does it do? What is, the, what is an LSA three, four, five? You will understand those topics inside out. All right, does that answer your question? Any other questions, guys? Anything that you need to ask about the class. Uh, no, actually it starts from next Sunday. KB at kbis.li, that's my email. That's the best way to do it. Uh, we also have forums on the, the website. You can also post questions over there or you can send an email to me. Uh, the Class timings are 8 p.m. Dubai time. The same time that you started the class today.
and it runs for roughly four hours. On Sundays. That's it for today. Is a payment method in GBP. Just go on the website. You can put any card from any part of the, uh, the world. So it's all good. Book a lab, meaning... Uh, which lab do you want to book, Chris? The K Cloud? The way, oh, all you got to do is log in using your account. So once you log in using your account, click on KBiz.live. Over here is why, where you buy the hours. So I clicked on KBiz.live. It shows you this K Cloud virtualized lab. Buy hours. Let's say you buy 20 hours over here. All right, it'll take you to the page. You put your credit card in. And once you buy it, it will show the hours over here. Once the hours show up, click on start and your rack is started. Absolutely. The ones that I showed you, everything is available. The only thing that you need to send an email to book is the SDA labs. Because the SDA is not EVNG, it's a physical rack. And on the physical rack that I have, I'll show you the topology for that as well. This is a physical rack with a physical DNAC. I have ice, a fusion router. These are all physical switches for SDA. This one you need to VPN in and have access to it. I'll provide the instructions how to access that, but that's something that you need to book. Once you're ready for it, don't do it now until you've actually gone through the course. You send a message to support at kbiz.live. They will send you a link for scheduling it. And once you schedule it, I'll send you the instructions to access it. That's for only for what? This is specifically for SDA lab time. The rest of it is KCloud. This is a physical rack. This is at the data center. Any other questions, guys? Absolutely, the whole session is recorded. The whole, and not just this session, as I told you and as I showed you, you can look at older sessions as well. So it's, let's say you wanna get ahead, Hussein. So you've done layer two technologies, you feel comfortable with it, you wanna see what I'm gonna cover in EIGRP, the previous classes are also available to you. So you can jump ahead and see the, the topics of the new session. But each time I cover it, I might bring something different. So always good to attend the class. But just in case you miss a session, everything, the whole session is recorded or you have access to the previous classes that I've done. It's a complete end-to-end -end solution for the CCIE enterprise infrastructure. Yeah, it's a live class with all questions and answers, everything there.
Let your friends know about it. <laughs> Bring a friend. They will be happy. Trust me. If you guys, thank you so much, Rashid. If you don't have any questions, let me know. Yeah, for the SDA, it's uh, standard four hour chunks. Chris. Yeah, Jody, from my side, it's done. Good, man. Looking forward to having you in class, Jody. See you guys in class. And as I said, please spread the word. Thank you so much. Take care, you guys. Bye now.